Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to take you through the waste yarn method. Now I have had a few questions on my channel in regards to waste yarn so I thought why not make a video purely dedicated to explaining the reasons why I use waste yarn and how exactly you do it. So basically the reason I use waste yarn is because it just gives you a much nicer finish on your edges. It also makes it really easy to join your ends together if that is something your project calls for but I will explain everything in more depth as we go along so all you're going to need today is of course a knitting machine this will work on absolutely any knitting machine big small any brand I'm just using my centro today you're then going to need your main yarn color so this would be say the color that you're using for your project and then you want some waste yarn, so something that you really don't mind if it gets a bit wrecked or you might have to cut it or it might get a bit tangled. So definitely don't use your best yarn for your waste yarn, but all you wanna make sure is that it is a contrasting color to your main project color, because obviously we wanna know which is the waste yarn and which is our project. So once you've got that all organized, let's get into it. So I'm just going to find the starting point on my machine, which is here. And then what you're going to do is cast on with your waste yarn. Now, obviously, I'm not making any project in particular. So how you cast on and, um, you know, how many stitches you use or if you're doing a panel or a tube, that will totally depend on what project you're making. But I'm literally just showing you guys how to use waste yarn. So I'm just going to cast on a tube. Now, when using waste yarn, I always like to do a minimum of at least 10 rows of waste yarn because you will find, and I'll show you later down the track in the video, that it will kind of start to unravel. So you want to make sure you've got plenty of rows. So even if it does start to unravel, it won't matter and you're not going to actually lose your project. Um, but yeah, I'll explain that as we go along. So all I'm going to do now is crank until I've got a minimum of 10 rounds maybe even more if you are just starting out with the waste yarn method i even recommend doing more if you can so maybe even do like 15 if you like but i will crank out my rounds now and i'll meet you back here once i've got a decent amount okay so i have just cranked out about 12 rounds of waste yarn so now what you're going to do is remove this from your yarn guide and just pop it in the middle there you could cut this if you like but i like to leave it intact because if I can remove it from my work without having to cut it then obviously you can keep that yarn and use it again next time so I like to try and reduce the waste but if you wanted to cut it then by all means please feel free to do so I am now going to take my main color yarn so this would be the say the yarn I'm using for my project and we are just going to join that in so just going in under that peg there in through the yarn guide and into our tension gauge and then what you're going to do is crank out your project. So depending on what you're making will obviously depend on how many rounds of your main color that you do. I'm just going to do a handful of rounds just for demonstration purposes, but you would now go ahead and crank out your project. So again, I will go ahead, do a few rounds and then I'll meet you back here. Okay. So once you have finished cranking out, however many rounds you need for your project, we are then going to remove our main color from our machine again just popping that skein in the middle there and I'm then going to take some more waste yarn you could of course use that same ball that we used at the, at the beginning if you wanted to cut it off and then join it in again like I said I like to try and avoid cutting it just to save wastage so I'm going to take a different color but obviously you just want to make sure that it is a contrasting color once again to your main project color so all we're going to do now is pop this Next, a lot of waste yarn into our machine and doing the exact same as what we did at the start. We're going to crank out a minimum of 10 rounds. Um, I think I did 12 at the start, so I'll probably do 12 once again or something around there. It doesn't have to be exact and, you know, you don't have to do the exact same amount as you did at the start. Um, at the end, you literally just want to make sure you've got enough rounds that if it does start to unravel, you're not going to actually lose your project. So anyway, again, I'm going to go crank out these rounds and I'll meet you back here. All right, so here we are. Once you have finished a decent amount of waste yarn rounds at the end of your project, you can now once again remove this from your machine. And 
What I love about Waist Yarn as well is it makes it so much easier to cast off. So if you didn't use Waist Yarn, you would have to go in and, you know, crank and pick up every stitch all the way around to cast off. If you dropped any stitches, then your whole project is basically ruined, right? So the great thing about Waist Yarn is you can literally just crank and take your whole thing off the machine and you don't actually have to go in and secure any stitches because like I said before, if this part starts unraveling, it doesn't even matter because your project is in the middle and it's kind of protected by the waste yarn, if that makes sense. So all you do to cast off when you've used waste yarn is you literally just crank your machine until your work starts to pop off. So just like this. So just going to remove that and put my machine away. So you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Now, as you can see, we've got our contrasting waist yarn colors at either end, and then this would be our project. So, you know, whatever you're making would be here in the middle. And like I said before, it just means your project is kind of protected by the waist yarn. So you don't have to worry about any of the stitches unraveling. It gives you a nice, neat edge. Um, and we will go in and remove this waist yarn and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I also just want to give you a comparison. So I've cranked out a few rounds without waist yarn. So obviously there's no other colors involved. It's literally just your project. Um, and the reason I wanted to show you this comparison is because I just want to show you the difference in finishes. So now that I have finished, so once you've finished a project, you obviously cut your yarn and then you're going to cast off. Now, if you don't use waste yarn, you pretty much have to cast off with a needle. So that's what I've got here. And I'm just going to go ahead now and quickly cast off. Now, I'm not going to take you through the whole cast off process because this is not a cast on or off tutorial. I do have one on my channel if you would like to go and learn, but I'm literally just showing you the difference between using waste yarn and not using waste yarn. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast off um, and then I'll meet you back here and I'll show you I'll show you the difference okay so I have cast off using a needle obviously this is the piece I did without any waste yarn and then this is the piece I did with waste yarn so basically I just wanted to compare the two just to show you what the difference is so for instance if you were to use the no waste yarn method this is pretty much what you're going to end up with you'll see that the ends do curl up quite a bit if you did then need to go and join these two edges together it, you probably would find it quite difficult because the ends are curling up, the stitches aren't super easy to see. So if you were going to then go in with like a crochet hook or something and join them, it would be a little bit difficult. Um, but mostly for me, it's just the curling of the edges. It's really frustrating. And just the edge itself is not as neat. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just not as neat. Like you can, you can see the yarn that you've used to cast off. It's nowhere near as tidy. So as a comparison with this piece, if you now wanted to go in and join both of these edges together, what you would do is take the tail um, in the color that is obviously your project color because we're gonna be cutting the waist yarn off or unraveling the waist yarn. So you, at the beginning of your project, when you cast on, you would make sure that you leave a big long tail because you would then use that at this point to join your edges together. So if you flip your project in like this, you'll see that because we have used a contrasting waste yarn, you can clearly see every single stitch in the color of your project. So this makes it super duper easy to go in and join your edges together, or even to just secure these stitches. So you could, if you didn't want to join the edges together you could easily just go in with a crochet hook and slip stitch or single crochet or something like that to secure each stitch before we remove the waist yarn but for this example I'm going to show you how you would join both edges together because I feel like that's the most common way of finishing off okay so what you would do is fold your work in half like this you want to make sure that your tail is in the corner I suppose and then you're going to find that very first stitch and pop your hook in under it so you can see it right there and then we can see the next one is right there 
Again, so easy to see. You can clearly see every single stitch that we need to go in and pick up. And then from there, I would just use my tail and slip stitch through to join those edges together. Just like that. So finding that next stitch, slip stitching together, and then you would obviously repeat this all the way along. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off joining the edges together and I'll come back here and I'll meet. Okay, so once you've gone in and slip stitched to secure all the stitches all the way along, disregard my tiny tail, obviously I didn't leave enough yarn at the beginning, but that's okay. Um, so what you're gonna do now is we're gonna remove our waist yarn. So remember before I said that it may start to unravel. This one actually hasn't done too bad, but depending on the yarn, you might find it does start to unravel, but that's totally fine because again, we did enough rounds that it's going to protect our project and our project wouldn't start unraveling. So all you're going to do is find the tail for your waist yarn and depending if it was the cast on or the cast off round, this was the cast on round. So for the cast on round you actually have to go in and just pull out that strand of yarn just to de-secure the stitches or unsecure the stitches, whatever you want to call it. So I use a crochet hook to just go in and pull it up and then pull it out. It's really easy. So you just do that all the way around until every single stitch has been unsecured. So once you've done that, you should then just be able to pull it undone. So just like um, if you were frogging a project, you would just pull it all undone. Sometimes it does get a little bit tangled, but usually it should be pretty easy to just unravel. Pull it all the way out. I know it might seem a little bit scary, but don't worry because we've already gone in and secured all our stitches. So this is what you will be left with. How beautiful and neat is that edge and that join? So this is what the join would look like. As you can tell, nice and neat compared to the piece we did without the waist yarn where you can already tell, I mean, I haven't joined this together, but you can already tell that it's just not going to be the same, you know, because at the end of the day, the first couple of rounds and the last couple of rounds of your work on the knitting machine are always going to be a little bit loose. Um, so I guess the waist yarn kind of absorbs all that. So you just get the nice, neat stitches. And once you remove the waist yarn, those loose stitches at the end are all gone. And it also just prevents that curling effect at the ends as well. So anyway, there's your comparison, my friends. If that doesn't sell you on the waste yarn method, I don't know what will, but hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you will be notified of all my future videos. But until next time, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.